Hey, welcome back. I wanted to give you kind of a quick or overview of, I guess, the formula that I've come up with in terms of making the 49cc Urban Express as fast as I can make it, at least up to this point. And I've already written some stuff down because I did some takes of the video and I didn't like them, so we're starting again. Obviously, uh, you want to have a uh, performance expansion chamber. A performance exhaust is really one of the most important keys to making a 49cc stock cylinder as fast as you can make it. And you want to have a, a tack gauge, a tachometer, um, because one of the first things you need to do is figure out the range of RPMs where your pipe hits. In other words, the power band. And on mine, uh, at, the, at the time I did this, kind of midway through this project, um, I found that my pipe hit from about 7,500 RPM to about 9,500 RPM. So that was my, my power band, uh, where the pipe basically is in tune with the engine is you know, I guess some people might say in, in resonance with the engine and it's basically packing uh, as much fuel charge back into the combustion chamber as possible between these RPMs 7500 and 9500 so find out where your pipe hits and where it, it, it trails off and so from there, what I decided to do was not worry about gearing anymore um, and worry more about getting the most RPMs I could out of the bike. Um, the greater the RPMs, the more power. So uh, through cylinder modifications, piston modif I've gone through so many pistons. Uh, I'm working with a couple different cylinders. But through cylinder modifications, piston modifications, uh, head modifications, um, you know, VM18 carburetor, and other things, I was able to get a top RPM so far of 10,410 RPMs. So, what that does is it gives me a cushion of almost 1,000 RPMs. And why do I need that cushion? Well, now that now I could probably even get it even to higher RPMs, but now I can play with the gearing and make a taller gear, or yeah, I'm just gonna call it a taller gear for the bike to turn. And what can happen is uh, the taller gear that you make, and you can make it several different ways, you can make it with a uh, different belt, uh, a thicker belt is going to create a taller gear. Um, you can change the length of the drive boss. Uh, so, and the boss is uh, basically what the belt rests on in the front pulley between the variator and the uh, that that pulley cheek. So. Um, I don't know, this will be a crude drawing, but it's going to be a terrible drawing, but let's say this is the, the variator and this is the, um, the other side pulley cheek, and between that rests the boss, and as you go faster and faster, the variator gets pushed in this way. So, if you start with a shorter or narrower boss, these cheeks are going to be closer together to begin with, and when it gets pushed in, they'll end up closer together than with a regular size drive boss. So you can change that. Um, you can switch out the, uh, uh, 
it's not the, the final gear, but the secondary gear, the counter, the counter shaft, I think it is, with those uh, race gears, which I eventually did. Uh, you can put on a, a bigger rear tire. But I found the 14-inch tire worked the best, um, especially after putting on the race gears. And uh, uh, what else can you do with the gearing? Uh, you can change the clutch. You can go to uh, a different contra spring, different clutch springs. Uh, basically anything you do on the transmission side is going to affect the gearing somehow. You can change the variator weights as well. But generally once you find the right weight, um, well, I, I won't go that far. Uh, I was going to say once you find, find the right, right uh, weight, you can stick with it. But if, I guess if you changed uh, something else, that can affect the amount of... If, I guess if you went to a thicker belt, you might need uh, less, less or more weight in the variator. Probably more weight in the variator. But uh, the main things that I changed was uh, the belt, and I did the gears, and I messed with the boss some. Uh, so anyways, when you make a taller gear, all of a sudden your top RPMs go down. But if you know where your pipe hits, then you can change the gearing and watch the RPMs. And let's say I make uh, such a tall gear that now my top RPM changes to, you know, 8,500. Well, if, if the highest RPM I can get is 8,500, then I know I'm missing out on about half of the power band, so I've geared it too tall. So this is a long-winded way of basically trying to say you want to balance uh, the gearing with where the range of your power band, because if you gear it too tall, you're missing out on uh, you can miss out on a good portion of your power band. So. I hope this kind of makes sense. And uh, so, and then if you've got, you know, your max RPM way above your max, where your power band ends, then what that means is you've got about a thousand RPM to play with in terms of making a taller gear so that you can still stay within your power band. And Ideally, you want the tallest gear to keep your entire power band range. Anyhow, that's what I've come up with. Maybe that helps you. Uh, maybe it just confuses you. I don't know. But um, in summary, I guess, worry about power first and then play with the gearing to keep to run the tallest gear you can to keep your entire power band on your pipe. That's, uh, that's what I'm thinking now anyways. And then when you've achieved that and you still haven't achieved your speed goal, you need to go back and modify your power plant, your cylinder, piston, head, fuel delivery system, whatever, to get even higher RPMs and then go back and change the gearing to again get the highest gear you can and maintain most if not all of your power band. So that's my lesson for today. Let's get on with the ride, shall we? Alright, after that long-winded lecture I wanted to throw in a photograph that uh, a fellow Express enthusiast had sent me recently this is their neighborhood express gang in Michigan, and I thought this was really cool. So I guess this is something we can all hope to strive towards in our own neighborhoods. 
I've probably had about that many bikes all together. 10, 20, 30, three dozen or so. Anyways, uh, this is uh, the latest cylinder modification to the Urban Express. I basically uh, uh, dremeled down those side transfers, note where the exhaust port is, and then uh, go directly opposite that to the top of the cylinder because that'll be relevant in the next slide. We'll call them slides anyways. And uh, what I want to do next is open up a window at the top. Um, I'll call it the intake port. But, you know, I guess maybe it's just another transfer port, but anyways, and then run a corresponding piston with the window as well. And uh, I don't want to make my window quite that big, but you get the basic idea. And from here, we will go to a little speed check where I run the urban past speed radar sign just to count, make sure my uh, trail tech is calibrated right. And when I pass it, uh, basically it flashes 40, and I look down right away, and I'm at 40.3 or so. So I'm going to say uh, it probably picked me up half second or second earlier and that uh, this is pretty much calibrated darn close so I think it picked me up right before there right around there somewhere and uh, flashed up for me on the speed so anyways here's one of the runs I'll uh, I'll step aside and let you, let you listen to it. I actually get stopped. I run up too close to that SUV and have to, have to bail out. It's still a pretty good run. This one uh, was either 48.2 or 48.4. Uh, I've got, I think, those that cleaning up those side transfers on the cylinder kind of acted like raising the exhaust port. And, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but basically, um, what it did was it increased the speed where the pipe hits. So I've got to get up to basically 41 or 42 before the pipe even kicks in. And uh, but then you know the pipe carries me through uh, to 48 range. So we're getting pretty close. I'll just I'll just talk through this second run here and. Uh, kind of ran out of space, stop sign up here, I needed a little longer, maybe I could have gotten a little better, but uh, here comes my best run of the day, and it puts us really close, so uh, I'll step aside, and you can take it all in.
that car. I got a little too close to it, and she was turning left up ahead, so I had to had to back off. But I still think uh, that was about the best I could probably do. Anyways, um, I forgot to mention the other thing I did since the last time was not only change the cylinder, but I bought a brand new uh, stock belt or Treatland. Uh, basically has a stock belt and uh, so my other one had worn about six tenths of a millimeter and uh, so I did the cylinder change and the new belt and uh, currently stand at 48.9 so 1.1 mile an hour to go and uh, Hopefully we can get it soon because this has taken quite a long time. Anyhow, thanks for watching and we will see you soon.